This video is brought to you by Craven's Comic Books and Collectibles. Check out their weekly live show auction and sale at facebook.com slash Craven's Comics every Sunday night at 9 p.m. Eastern. And you can check out their inventory at cravenscomics.com. Craven's Comics, for the comics you crave. Welcome back to the program, Tom Allison. Hi, friends. How you doing? Pretty good. How you doing, sir? <laughs> I'm great. Good it's, stuff. I got to say, Tom, uh, watching the episodes, but now also hearing your voice here, it just brings warmth into my life because I see you on Facebook all the time and pictures do not bring that. We don't get to hear your wonderful voice, you know, oh. your stories. The so, full uh, package. That's the it. full package. <laughs> <laughs> that's very sweet. Thank you so much. That's so nice. I know what you mean. It's a personal touch, as it were. Yes. A little that's smile right. in the sound. That's yes, right. That's, that's right. That's it, man. That's uh, that. That's what you bring. That's why I just before we went, brought you in, I was saying that we need a ray of sunshine in our lives right now, and you're oh it. My God. That's a lot of pressure, but I'll do what I can to carry that along. Oh, don't All worry. Right, <laughs> don't don't be pressured, sir. You're already doing it. It's great. Oh my God! Of Look course, at me. I haven't smiled all day. That's it. It's, wow. It, it, yeah, see, this is what it's you're doing. It's a magic power I have. That's what it is. It's, just, <laughs> it's something I do. It's like I'm, I'm a modern bewitched. <laughs> <laughs> you just show up, you wiggle your nose. Wiggle my and nose and fine. good shit happens. That's there you I, go. That's how it goes. <laughs> wiggle my nose and good shit happens. That also sounds like some dealer's uh, hair <laughs> motto. But anyways. <laughs> oh, it's oh, good to man. be back. <laughs> yes, no, it's great, great to have you back, man. And... Uh, oh. Great to see you back on TV again. Of course, you know, you've done a number of uh, guest appearances over the past year on shows like uh, Hudson and Rex and Frankie Drake Mysteries and Slasher. But now we get to see you doing, you know, uh, uh, your full effect happening right now on Corner where you play uh, Dr. Dr. Eli there. And uh, just already, man, like just the just the attitude thrown around, like the just it permeates. So good. This guy yeah. is like, the, he needs an extra office for his ego, and I love it. <laughs> well, that's good. That's good. He's a piece of work. When I read it, I laughed. I literally laughed out loud. I just I started laughing. My partner's going, what? I said, this is funny. I cannot wait to get my teeth into this. Well, because so like for, for a lot of us, like and us especially where we were first introduced to you as pre on, on Killjoys, it's, he's, a, he's a sassy character. But uh, what I would say after what we've seen so far, Pre is a little bit more in touch with his emotions and, and you know, his people skills. A little uh, bit. Whereas yeah. Dr. Dr. Eli... Dr. Eli's got a sociopath thing going yeah. on. <laughs> <laughs> Although it's hard to argue with a man who keeps a standee of himself in his office. I mean, you sometimes have, just have to have that. You know, there's nothing else that says a life-size cutout. When they told me, I, I said, seriously, I thought they were kidding. And then we had the photo shoot, and I could not stop laughing about it. It just was too funny. And then it showed up, and then, of course. The thing is, this, the cutout has been scaring the hell out of everyone the entire season. And it's sitting in the office, and people go in to clean or to set up for the day. And like, ah, oh, God. You're like, There's someone standing there, and it's so real. It's, I mean, it scared the hell out of me, and it was me. <laughs> I, I think that, uh, I think we, maybe we need to have a little bit of a talking session about that, uh, Tom. Uh... Work it out. And yeah. work it out. That Fear of oneself. Much. That is literally. an issue. Definitely. I mean, yeah. But when it's literally like but outside of myself, going, that is too much. That's is that what I look like when people see me? I don't I got him the blue, and no wonder people scream. That's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. But of course, uh, it's the fourth season of Coroner. Of course, Serena Swan, star of Coroner. She's been the coroner on there, Dr. Jenny. Of course, last season, Dr. Jenny, some Bad shit happened for her, and she was like, I just need a break. And so, of course, Dr. Eli came in to uh, fill out her time away. But now that she's back in the second episode, man, the the this, there's a lot of energy going on there. There's, a, there's, some, there's some static between the two characters. And it's fun to watch the two of you basically have a pissing contest. <laughs> totally, the whole time. The whole time. From the minute we meet each other, it's like, nope. Nope, it's me. Yeah. Nope, it's me. No, it's me. No, it's me. No, it's me. Yeah. That's, uh, it, yeah, it's, it, it's, it's, it's so interesting to see a dick measuring contest between two corners, uh, which you would think would be a little bit more of like a, 
respectable kind of you know like professional courtesy type job but no it's like let's whip the dicks out let's get who's got the bigger cadaver that's what it is who's got the bigger cadaver it is well i mean i mean right from the very beginning i don't really (laughs) she's back to her own job going you know what i'm good i'm back and i'm like no no Uh, you, you you carry out your little break i'm the boss here for two more months and it's like oh Okay, how's that gonna go? I mean, like, how's it gonna go at that point? What are you gonna do? Yeah, I, I love the fifty-seven days. I love how just the, <laughs> you when I read wielded that. wielded fifty-seven days, like like some people wield like uh, axes and and jackhammers. Like it was, <laughs> it was vicious, and I loved every minute of it because you could I, I could see it. It was like a glint in your eye as you said it too. It was. It, mm, well. Uh, well, funny, <laughs> reading, when I read the script, and I thought he's so it's he's so intensely behind himself in his opinions, mm-hmm. you know that that I, I thought he's got to be like he couldn't have gotten where he's gotten if he was just that. So I thought he's charming, he's outrageously charming, and thinks he's worth it. So it's all a bit smiley, and it's just a bit a bit camp, you know. And I, so I, yeah. I started playing, and they were like, yes. And more. Yes, go. I'm like, oh, darling, darling, you look terrible in that shirt. Come on in, have a drink. You're like, wait, did you just insult me? What happened? I'm, I'm confused. It sounded nice, but it was rude. Oh, man, we got an email in from Josh M who says, Happy New Year, geeks. A loyal fan here. Love Tom. He is fantastic. Stay well. Well, thank you, Josh. And we know you've been a long time listener. We've seen your name pop up many a time with many a great email, sir. Thank you very much. But, uh, but Tom, as I said, the chemistry between you and Sorinda as these automatic enemies thing has been awesome. What was it like to play that with Sorinda? Um, amazing. She's, she's incredible. She's, um, it's incredible what she keeps in her mind. Like, she thinks of 18 things at once, and she goes through every detail of what the scene might be. And so, like, uh, what she comes to the table with is so ready to go, and she knows that character inside and out. So anything that doesn't feel authentic, she's right there for it. So we can keep, kind of keep playing. I could trust that if it's off the grid too far, she'll bring us back to where it needs to be. Because I'm the newbie, right? It's like I'm in her house. So she was so great about, about clarity of, of what the vibe is. And, and the producers were great. And the directors were great. And the crew was great. So it was a lot of fun. And at the same time, they were like, go, play. Let's, let's see where this all goes. So it ended up being a, a real a scream to do. Well, because you're mentioning there that you're the newbie on the show. And I, I remember talking to some of the, when we talked to some of the other people that were uh, showing up on Killjoys and y- you guys were a tight family that had guest stars that come in and welcome yeah. them. And now you're in that reverse role here where you're, you're but it sounds like it was like a, just a really open and welcoming set for you to, to come on to, yeah. to, to be part of the show this year. Amazing. Yeah. And everyone was. Like, the crew was great. They were so... You know, it helped that I, uh, I mean, I love a choice that you can see from space. So I, may, I will make a bold choice, you know, and, those, and that first scene when you see me was the very first day of shooting that I did, was actually her and I in the office. And then the very last scene, of the, there was actually the two to three scenes I did the first day that I was there. And because I was sort of no holds barred, like, okay, bitchy, 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 but charming. And they were like laughing between takes, going, oh, my god and so the message i was getting was like we love you you're so great right. so it was really like they liked what i was doing which helped and and so i felt like okay great these are my people off we go and then it was amazing and i got really close to people it was lovely to be around them and hang out and you know a great vibe with uh with uh, like um uh kylie and john who played the 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 i don't know what their 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 titles are in the show, the, the attendants, the, 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 our crew in the, uh, they're like the assistant coroners. Yeah. 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 And yeah. they were so amazing. We became so, such good pals, the, the three of us. And, and, uh, uh, cause we've had a lot of scenes like alone together, which we'll see as we go through the show, there's the three of us there. And then of course, Sarinda's there doing all kinds of other things. Um, but it was, it was great. It was great. Very cool. We got an yeah. email in from Brenda N. Uh, a few different things here. New to Peacemaker, like it though. Stay tuned for our review, Brenda. Pretty cool. Hey to Tom. Blessings in 2022. Blessings to you as you to you uh, as well, Brenda. Very nice. nice. Thanks, Brenda. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I really like how the second episode, um, uh, Cutting Corners, how that kind of ended, where it was sort of basically you got there's like a respect 
there, but at the same time, nobody's willing to like drop their ground no. and, you know, reiterating I'm here until the end of my contract. So it seems very much like we're going to get this great kind of frenemy sort of feel throughout the rest of the season. Yeah. It's, it's very, it's tense. It gets, it's tense. This is the tensest it is of course. And then, but as it goes along, it's interesting because we get to the writers are so smart and it's not like just like you go, Oh, it'd be hard. And then like get nicer and nicer and nicer. It kind of does, but there's always, I'm always spiky and she's always spiky and we kind of don't let each other get away with things, even though I see that she's very smart and capable at her job and she sees that I can do things too. But at the same time, it's not like we're like, you know what, let's braid each other's hair by episode four. <laughs> like, it's still like, don't step on my toes. Yeah, you did good there. It was okay. Like, it's not, it doesn't get quickly like, oh, we're great. But certainly there's a, there's a lot of traveling that they do and, and there's a lot of respect for each other, which is great. That helps a lot. That's, but there that's was like awesome. this, there was like this uh, kind of mutual, like almost like eagerness when it came to, okay, now it's time to cut somebody open. Yeah. That seemed to the point where both of you seemed to snap and to be like, okay, now we're a team. <laughs> yeah. Well, when it comes to the work, that's just it. They disagree on how to do the work, yeah. but the work itself, they're in it. Like, let's get the answers. Let's make this make sense. You know, just he's all by the book and she's all instinct and, and, and intuition and, and emotion. He's all like, no emotion. <laughs> Did you feel something? Would you sign this form, please? You know, oh, the so, forms. The forms. Oh, my God, the forms. I, like, I, I, I got I to gotta say, Tom, as I was watching it and it was just like, and you and the, 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 the delight that Eli has in those forms. And I was like, having met you and spoken to you so many times, I'm like, that is so not Tom. But this is amazing. Amazing. It's great. Well, and making him, uh, you know, again, trying to find those things. I mean, first of all, the great honor of this show for me is that the part was written for me. It's actually oh, uh, Adriana nice. Maggs, who is the showrunner. She was the director of the episode of uh, Hudson and Rex that I did. And we just really clicked and she seemed to like what I was doing. And all of a sudden I get this call saying, um, we want to write you into the show if CBC says yes. We're writing this part for you. I'm like, okay. I didn't know what the part was. didn't know how long it was going to be in it. And all of a sudden it starts to roll out and I'm reading this going, Oh my God, <laughs> gold mine. And, but like, she just, she gets, and, and the whole writing room seemed to get my vibe. So I had this kind of this, this kookiness and I loved playing his, his harshness with his, again, his charm and his ease and his glee. He, he enjoys the job. That's where you see his passion is actually in ripping people apart, which is very disturbing. But, but his passion is also you know, in ripping people apart verbally as well. So well, there you go. <laughs> it's about, I'm the boss. I mean, he's got a huge ego and anyone who gets in the way of that is just wrong. I got what you know, you go, just going back a few moments ago where you were talking about, uh, uh, you know, with, with, with answering Andrew's question about, you know, like the way that you guys work off of each other and, and they have this mutual respect. It started to make me think about actors coming to a set, you know, like, especially being on a show, sometimes you don't, sometimes you don't always like who you work with, but on the set, on the day, like, you know, like, is that, did you draw some of that, uh, you know, for your character out of ex those types of experiences where you may have worked with somebody that you respect, but maybe not necessarily like? Well, we've all been there, let's face it, just in life, you know, something you've got to deal with and they're good at their job, but how they do it, sometimes yeah. you kind of go, mm, you could be nicer. Or like, do you hate what you're doing? Because you're really good at it, but you seem like you're angry. You know, like, we've had that experience. Yeah. Some of the call, some people we call mother. Um, other ones we go, um, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Some of it was amazing. Uh, but, but, you know, like we have those, those moments. You just, that's what we do is we draw from our life things. And, and also it's the fun. It's the fun of going, imagine if I didn't like how someone did something, but I respect what they do and how they do it, or, or maybe what they do, not how they do it. And that's the part that's fun is that he respects her, but doesn't like the details of what she does. She goes too far for him, you know? And so playing with that in the whole season or the part that I'm in um, is about this energy between the two of them and her trying to understand. And of course we will at some point find out from his backstory. We kind of go, oh, cause when I saw that episode, I went, oh shit, okay. Wow. Okay, I gotcha. There, that's that explains a lot. And when I think it'll make the audience really kind of go, "Oh wow, okay, that's horrible." Okay, great. Uh, yeah, because oh, it's good. Because in 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 at the end of the second episode, uh, when they're having their little tete tete, you know, um, when they kind of put the rulers away, as it were, and uh, he he drops a little bit of like, "I was you at this po at one point," you know, and I've learned right. that you know, he talks about that and, you know, and so there is this like, and, and Serena has that look on her face, uh, you know, it's like, oh, what's this little magical little bit of mystery that you, uh, that you've got hidden away there. So 
we do get to finally, at some point during the season, we get to see a little bit of that yeah. be revealed. You'll get and, and and we sort of related into it when she does that. Uh, that great, I love the moment actually because I hadn't seen it until everyone saw it uh, um, last night. And when I reveal there's something there, and she kind of leans into it, and he sees her trying to sort of Jenny him. He's all like, <laughs> "No, bitch, no, you don't get in here." It's like, "Oh, it's that deep, okay." And when we, when we find out, we're like, "Oh, it's that deep, okay, wow." It's 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 a real like a real pain spot that's I can't wait to people until people hear it because they'll have a bit of time before it you know it's not like tomorrow but uh, a couple of moments when we get there you see what they've gone through you kind of go oh I mean I understand you're still a bit of a D but you know okay we understand <laughs> now why and but he also starts to soften too which is great we get to see a little more of him and he trusts her more and it's a it's a cool journey that's awesome that's awesome. well I yeah. look forward to see how. The rest of that unfurls. Um, of course, over the pandemic, we've all had to make a lot of changes and stuff like that. And some of us have picked up new hobbies and things like that, focused on different things. I know I know that you've been writing more. Yeah, well, I've been really, really, um, I keep saying the word lucky, but lucky sounds like I had nothing to do with it. Aligned, let's put it that way. There, there's things professionally for me that have aligned in the last couple of years of the pandemic. Um, so I've been able to, do, I've been directing, I, I wrote a show for Stratford um, last season. They asked me to do a cabaret. So I, you know, I, I didn't write the songs, but I wrote all this dialogue for the four actors I had. And um, it's been kind of a cool time artistically. I've had a lot of chances to do other things. That's awesome. And I hear that in April, uh, you're going to be directing a play, a musical on the Million Dollar Quartet. Yeah. Of course, one of the biggest, one of the biggest moments in, uh, in music history. Yep, totally. This is yeah. a really cool, cool show that was put together. Uh, fictionalized version of that experience. And it's got like all their, these hits of the, the four guys. It's actually, for those of you who don't know, the Million Dollar Quartet, um, they redeemed that. It was a day, it was December 4th, 1956 in uh, Memphis in, at Sun Records, where they all sort of started, where on the same day in the studio was uh, Carl Perkins, Jerry Lee Lewis, Johnny Cash, and Elvis. Literally a million dollar quartet and and Sam Phillips, who was the head of Sun Records and discovered all of them, sort of had the good sense to just go click and turn the machine on. And they and so there's a there is an actual recording of them singing. It's mostly spirituals in the actual recording, um, mm. but, but it's like it just it's just, the sounds just on and they're like talking and laughing and singing songs. So they've organized it into the show where it's actually like sort of all these great hits of theirs singing through them in story worlds and some of them are recording it. Some of them are just hanging out, singing together. But it's a really charming, charming show, and it's been a big hit all over the place. That's awesome. That's and you're, awesome. you're bringing that to Theater Calgary, right, in April? Theater Calgary, yeah, I'm directing it. Yeah, I can't wait. We've got a great team, and we're all excited. We're planning the set and planning out how it's going to look and, and just finish the casting, and it's, it's great. That's awesome. So, so with that, like, it's, so like obviously directing, uh, you know, it's a new challenge. It's a different challenge than being mm. an actor, mm. um, you know. And, and we also know that you you love to, you love to sing, and you know, like you've got so many talents that uh, are under yeah. the surface. There, what is directing something that you would like to explore even more as you go forward uh, into the future? Or yeah, very much so. Actually, it's funny. I, I when I began my career, I went to Ryerson Theater School here in, in Toronto. It's one of the theater schools across the country. Um, I went into the acting program, but I was directing even then. I was a kid, okay. but I, I had a, a, a taste for it. I love working with actors and I loved being in charge of the whole show and figuring it all out. But then I, my career took off as an actor afterwards. And so that's where I went. And over the years, I've been very fortunate. I've, been, I've worked most of my career, but it's been calling to me, you know, just kind of wanting to say more, you know, wanting to be, be able to take the whole show, not just my part, but the whole show, all the performances and help give um, actors as much um, material and inspiration and 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 push in, in direction that help them find character and tell the big the bigger story and it's being a, a storyteller i love being a storyteller in my own stuff but i love it even more when i can actually be in charge of the whole thing and help everyone every, a whole team travel through the story of a show i think that's just so thrilling yeah no that's pretty awesome directing acting you're also a song and dance man. Is there anything you can't do to entertain people, Tom? <laughs> well, I'm a whore that way, so not really. <laughs> um, <laughs> what do you need? I mean, I mean, you know, it's it's just I. It's funny, and, and no one believes this. I'm an ex. I'm an introvert, really. Like I'm actually shy as a kid. I was shy, but I found acting. I liked that I could be other people and do things and. 
and I sort of learned to be extroverted publicly, but I'm still like, I, I can sit inside for days and not go anywhere and be fun reading, reading stuff and watching TV and, you know, talking to some people and, you know, so, so it's been a good thing that's kept me busy. I think it's, it's also, um, the directing thing is I like that I can sort of do it, but it's not, I don't have to be the one doing it all the time now. You know, I don't have to be the one on the stage performing it. I like that I can get inside. I love the digging through the stuff and, and looking at the script and what does it mean and who are you talking to and what this is about and getting the, the creative ideas and then going, you all are great. Happy opening. See you later. <laughs> <laughs> like you all do the 18 month run. I got something else to do. I got to go have a drink or something. So yeah, that's like, right. I'm happy to do it and then, then leave, like just take off and go have a great run. I'll get the show reports and the emails and hear how everyone's doing. But, you know, I'm out. I did my work yeah. is done. Have a great time. So you're not Michael Caine and noises off. We just keep showing up every second <laughs> week. <laughs> <laughs> my God, that is a funny play. That is a funny play. Oh, yeah. I'm directing, mm -hmm. I'd love to direct that, actually. Yeah, I love I love. Oh, if you, I would love to see you direct that. Oh, I think you would there. be perfect to direct that i'm wacky like i'm a you know my, my partner says uh i'm a cartoon i'm a born cartoon my acting yeah. idols were the muppets and bugs bunny what does that tell you i'm like hey. oh that's acting i see i yeah. get how this works <laughs> cut to my career <laughs> there you go there you go that's those are some great teachers right there come definitely. on the best some comic timing some big choices you know yeah Teach you how to scam people as well. That's of always course, sure. <laughs> That's all we're doing as actors anyway, right? Believe me, believe me. Pay, give me money. I'm going to pretend for you. That's all we're doing. And half my career has been in a dress. So Bugs Bunny right there, he was a drag half the time. I'm like, listen, I come by it honestly. It was all there before me. <laughs> oh, man. I totally well, can see that, Tom. I just like, it's all, everything that you just said is now making everything just. Doesn't make sense? It, it just ties in a nice bow. I mean, like, people think I'm kidding. I'm not really kidding. Muppet Show and Bugs Bunny were like, I was like, this is everything I want to be. Like, as a kid, I oh, want to yeah. be this. And I was like, by the time I realized that that's not how that should work, I was 22. So it was too late. I had been formed. That was yeah. it. <laughs> oh, man. And you're like, you're at theater school going, okay. And so where's the part where people get to see what's happening behind the scenes? Okay, what, what does that happen? <laughs> yeah. And when do I drop the anvil on your head? Where does yeah. that come in? <laughs> if I paint the hole in the wall and you run through it, or then I no, okay, just ask. Oh my god! Well, Tom, as always, it's been a delight talking oh, to you, man, so and good. look forward to seeing uh, the rest of yeah. Doctor Eli's story. And of course, anytime you got anything else happening, we'd love to talk to you about that as you well. You got it. I always love you guys. Are amazing. It's great to see you both. That's All awesome. Right. Thank you, Tom. Have yourself a good night, man. <laughs> you too.